mwari tina utenga tukuta msafu wetu cha kumbira kwa shindoko ati mwari tuno sema dego kazua tukutenda hii ni chifo cha upenyu nekutichengeteza mukati mewedo za chikristu maroko musoro kudenga na wewe wana wenyu wauri ya mukati meimba shingori pasi pekutari kubira tents makanaka kumtaure nesu wakareme wa wose tusai mitoro wari kuchema wose tukutai misodzi baba mfarizi atora nzungo yake maroko musoro kudenga tsiko tsesi yoni zaiwa tugadzirira ishemwa ari makanaka shoko Kuya ichiburukai mutaure ne ana zedu pakupedzisira ati kupambiri mekurudzirwa kwa muri muziita racho ni Jesu Kristu amen we have this one announcement to make tine chiziviso chekupa sister chakoma junior lost her mother anza chakoma vadiki vakasadaski vana mai vavo i think some of you no yeah, she was at her place was in jimno asiva anga ari kuomba kwao but now i think she was keeping her home with her sister anga achiwa chikita nianza tsinzi so first on yesterday morning wakashaika mangwanani and i think uh, uh, she will be buried tomorrow bacha kwa mangwana i think there's some brethren also who have gone there already tina amadza to fana kuenda mberi god willing will catch up also with the burial tomorrow Mariva chida tichange tiriko we pray for her tivana matire we pray for her family that the lord can comfort them tona matira mburu kuti mari vanyaradze amen on friday we are back to church again mseyo chishano tetiri pa church so we are not having area meetings on friday tete sina mu meetings on zimba so we will be here on friday tini kuti pano i mean if you love to be in church wangari vano faranga vari mu church amen so we will be here on friday Now tonight by the grace of God I take another little message. I thought I would continue with uh, the events from uh, millennium. Since it is a thing you just do once in a while. I thought we could wait for others maybe on a Sunday then because once we go through won't be able to come back. I think we have to know that so that we are not taken by surprise we know exactly what the scripture says and we know exactly where we are So our homework is to try and identify in the scripture our scriptural position as of now and as of tomorrow amen amen so tonight i like us to turn our bibles to the book of habakuk chapter 2 just for a short while verse 2 to 3 of habakuk reads verse 2 3 and the lord answered me and said write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it jehova akandipindira akati nyora zvavaratidzwa zvigoonekwa kwazvo pamawendefa kuti zvigone kurawa no unomhanya amen reads for the vision is yet for an appointed time but at the end it shall speak and not lie though it tarry wait for it because it will surely come it will not tarry nokuti zvakaratidzwa izvi ndezvinguva yakatarwa zvo wavarira kuguma azvingari rewi nema kunyangwe zvikanonoka uzvimirire nekuti zvichauya zviro kwazvo azvingaiti nguva huru Amen. Proverbs 29:18 reads. Sivewo. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Pasina chiratidzo vano vanoparara. But he that keepeth the law happy is he. Uyanochiketa murawo anemfaro. 
May God add blessings on of his word as we take our service. Tonight, just for a short while, I would like to speak on this little subject. A vision for an appointed time. A vision for an appointed time. Now we see the Habakkuk talks something to do with a vision. Now, when you talk of a vision, you are looking at something maybe which could stretch far, which in time and in space might not have been experienced, but it's shown sometimes before it happens. Uh, it's shown sometimes before you see it. Uh, so you see with the vision comes not necessarily understanding but a showing forth of something coming. Something you would go through. Something you will notice along the way. Something you have not known, but God is trying to make you aware of. And you normally hear, even in different places of work, they talk of a vision. They talk of a mission statement. Uh, now you see, when you look at the vision of whatever uh, establishment it is, that's about what they want to achieve in the end. The, it might be so far away but it's so clear in their mind that in the space of a year or two years or three months or one month, we want to see these things happen. In other words, as they operate, they stand to be guided by their vision. To the common man, he might not see anything. But to the visionaries of this establishment, they are visionaries because they are working by vision. It's so clear in their mind. It might not necessarily be visible as yet. Yet it's so clear. So when they write that statement there, it's something in the end they want to see in space, in time. So it's not just something they want to waste their time on, writing our vision is this, but it's something they want to see happen or achieve in the end. So, we see right here where Habakkuk says, the Lord answered me and said, write the vision. God may be had shown his servant a vision. Like is his, his custom with his, with his prophets, like uh, Hezekiah, yes. I mean like uh, Ezekiel, like Isaiah. Isaiah. They would be shown things before it has happened. Why that is, that's the whole pattern of the Bible. They would be shown those visions. Things happening before they happen. In other words, whatever events start to happen between the fulfillment of the vision and being spoken, those events are building up towards the fulfillment of that vision. Just like you see God had a vision. That's why he says it was back in his mind. 
He wanted to be a father. And if he was to be a father, it means it should be somebody with a family. He wanted to be a healer. In other words, if he was to be a healer, there was somebody to be healed. He wanted to be a redeemer. So in other words, in order to redeem, there would be somebody who would fall. So by vision, all these things were there. And at some point, though it took long, though it went this way or that way, but finally he became a redeemer. No wonder why then you hear the prophet showing that that lamb was slain in the mind of God before the foundation of the world. How could he slay a lamb in his mind before the world was there, before the, 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 the foundation of the world? In other words, he already had a vision of it. He knew what was going to happen. He knew there was need for redemption. He knew there was need for atonement. And having known it, because as God, he could be on fast forward and see the end from the beginning. He unwound back now to start to see events unfold in time and in space. Though the vision may tarry, but yet, is for an appointed time. It will come to pass. And the whole issue about the word of God is, is a vision. It's a long range vision. When God says, let there be light. He was not trying out. He knew very well there was going to be light. He knew it. He could see it coming. He says, let there be light. That's why when the prophet said it could have taken millions of years or whatever, God was not worried. You don't see a verse in the Bible where it says God was beginning to be worried because now the sun took so many years to come. Why? Because he spoke by vision. It was shown he knew it. Because he's an all-knowing God. And that's why I want to tell you, God is not surprised. Whoever you are, whatever you're going through, whatever things you face, God knows it all. God is not taken by surprise. God knows exactly whoever comes into your life, and no matter what happens to you, God is not surprised. He knows it all. Might know this preacher was preaching. He says, you don't worry about anything. Because he says, let every seed produce after its own kind. There is sowing time and there is reaping time. He says, whatever seed you sow, at some point it will germinate and at some point you will also be able to reap but now you sow your one seed one grain of, 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 of wheat but when you reap you don't reap one grain you put in one seed a grain of maize but when you reap, you don't reap one. So he says, whatever you do, whatever actions, whatever, you will reap abundantly. Be it good. Then you reap so many good things. Be it bad. Then you reap so many bad things. Ah, I was encouraged when that, that preacher was preaching. 
He says, so don't worry. Even if somebody says something to you, even if somebody shouts you, God has allowed it to come your way. It's for a purpose. God arranged all those things to come your way. And God is just trying to shape you and mold you towards that desired person that he wanted to see you. So God has a vision about you. He has a vision about Brother Mariwa. He has a vision about uh, 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 Sister Manyangaze. He knows your end result. He knows what you will be in the end. But there has got to be a shaping and events that will take place between him knowing and you reaching the desired end. Like we saw in Sunday, he said, to give you uh, is, 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 is ex, the expected end. He has an expected end for each and every one of us. But before we get to the expected end, there are surely many events that will go through. Some we don't understand. Some will knock us down. Some will seem as if to discourage us. But let me tell you, my brother, God knows it all. He is shaping you towards the fulfillment of a vision. Are we together? Are we together? You tell me when God seen me there in the rapture? when God sees me in eternity as part of the bride then brother you tell me he will lose me he won't lose me it might be through thick and thin but somehow though the vision will tarry but at an appointed time it shall come to pass now, and the Lord answered me and said write the vision What's the purpose of writing? So that it's on record. So that you don't forget. It's a point of reference that God said it. And if God said it, I believe it, and that settles it. No matter how many years, no matter how long it will take, no matter how many difficulties, but you will navigate your way through. Finally, that vision will come to pass at an appointed time. The time is not your time. The time is not the pastor's time. But the time is an appointed time which God appoints himself. No man knows the time. No man knows the hour. But God himself knows. He has an appointed time. Many scriptures, many promises. Sometimes you wonder how. Sometimes you wonder when. But, 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 but. But though the vision will tarry, but at an appointed time, it shall come to pass. No wonder why Habakkuk was told, write the vision so that it's in black and white, so that all can have chance to read and see, so that there is no question about it, that I, the Lord, has authored this vision. No matter how many years, no matter how much time, no matter how much hindrances that the people may know, it's a vision ordered of the Lord. And if it is the Lord at an appointed time, not your time, but His appointed time, it shall come to pass. Are you aware, friends, that we are in the unfolding of the vision that John was shown on the island of Patmos? How far back was John shown that vision? That which God and signified 
by the hand of his servant. Starting with the church ages. Moving on today. Seeing the coming of the beast. The image of the beast. Seeing the coming of the rapture. Seeing the coming of the tribulation. Seeing the coming of the battle of Armageddon. Seeing the... Uh, uh, the second resurrection and of the second resurrection seeing the white throne judgment and on the white throne judgment some were condemned and some were acquitted and those who were condemned felt it's unfair it's not just and they raised dust rising up against Jesus and the bride, the righteous. Then comes that's the battle of Gog and Magog. Then God comes to burn up the whole earth, destroy it by fire. Hmm? Fire could be chemical. Fire, whatever, fire. Supernatural. Clean this earth. And what happens? And then you have volcano push out. And when it pushes out, it's pushing out the foundations of the new city. Right in the land of Palestine. The land which is the center of controversy. That's the center of the whole world. That's where the city will push up, which will be four square, 1,500 miles there, 1,500 miles there, 1,500 miles there, 1,500 miles there. That's the new city. But all those things, brother, John saw them, not yet. And years have been rolling by. Oh, the vision will tarry. But it's for an appointed time. To us, we can almost see now that the rapture is about to be. It has tarried. So many have preached about it. So many have come and gone. It's like you hear them say, you shall hear of wars. Uh, and rumors of wars and says be not moved yet because the end has not yet come. But that has been said all and over. Is that so? But you go then here the scripture says not until the gospel has been preached to the uttermost parts of the world. Tell me today which place has not received the gospel? Now we are not talking more of the secular gospel, but this message of the hour. Which place can we say? Maybe if any, very little, but almost. Every corner, every title. Look even in Zimbabwe, almost every place, every area. That's a sign. Then the end will come. There's a time when it was so far-fetched. It was so far away. But now, it's no longer. But John was shown as that great and mighty vision. And ages have come and gone. People have given their own interpretation. But though the vision may tarry, but it shall surely come to pass. So you see, he says, write the vision. That's why even today we go, still go back to the book of Revelation. We still go back to Habakkuk. It was written. And make it plain upon tables. Make it plain so everyone can see it. It's not said in a corner. It's not for any privacy. Write it on tables. I'm on record as Jehovah God giving you this vision that no matter how much it will delay, but it will surely come to pass. 
Father, if we get that secret, then we'll know what it means to hold on God's promises. No matter how much the devil would want to convince you that it's impossible, my brother, he cannot convince you otherwise. You know at some point it will come to pass. So make it plain upon the tables and that he may run that readeth it. Are we not reading it? For the vision is yet for an appointed time. So you see, he begins to show here that that vision is written. That vision is playing upon the tables. But the fact that it is written it's not that the day you read it, that's when it happens. The day it's written, that's when it happens. It's got an appointed time. And God might not have disclosed what that time is. But it will surely come to pass. So it's a work of faith. It's a work of faith. Upon the promise of God. So he says it's yet for an appointed time. It's for a given time. It's for a known time that's known to God. It might be too late for you. It might not it might not seem as if nothing will ever happen. But remember, it's for an appointed time. There is an exact time that God knows when it will take place. So it's not how many years it will take to happen. It's not how many months. But it's when it will happen, it's at an appointed time. And who appoints the time? God appoints the time. So he says, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. When does a vision speak? When the vision begins to be manifested, when it, the vision steps into the mode of its fulfillment, the vision is speaking. In other words, the Bible has got promises of the rapture. God saw us going to the rapture. So what happens, brother, when we step into it, the vision is speaking. So there comes a time where you talk about the vision. Where you think about the vision. Where you might try to reason with the vision. That's fine and dandy. But that won't change the status of the vision. Because at some point, the vision will speak. And the vision won't speak because you have argued because you have cried so much or because you have doubted so much the vision speaks at an appointed time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's at a set time that God knows when this and this and this, this and this has happened when this thing and this thing is like that and that, then the vision speaks. So though that's a mistake which so many people make, as men we want to many handle God's word and manipulate it to bring forth certain things before the appointed time. That's why sometimes then you end up with whatever it is, it aborts. And whatever it is, sometimes it doesn't bring out the real picture. God has an appointed time. When God promised Abraham and Sarah to, well, that they will have a child, he had an appointed time. But at some point, Sarah could not wait. 
Then she provided a hugger. Maybe she thought it was too late. She thought maybe it was not going to happen. Maybe this is the way that God wants me to do it. I feel like I gave her my handmaid. And she provided a hugger. A handmaid. And they brought forth a wild child. That's Ishmael. Who is a thorn in the flesh to Israel right up till today. That's what happens when you try to manhandle a vision or a promise. When you try to make it come to pass, it will torment you. It will afflict you. But when it comes at the appointed time, my brother, it's a blessing. Hallelujah. Amen. When it's written on the tables of stone, when it's written right there, it's God's own business, not your business, to make it speak. Yours is to pray and believe and hold on. And when the appointed time comes, the vision shall speak. How soon we quickly let off our hold on the promise. Because of things that come our way. Between the writing of the vision and the fulfillment and the speaking of the vision. There is so many things that come in. But my brother, go through all that. Having faith. The vision someday. That God sin of me shall speak. Are we together? Now, so, he says, for the vision is yet for an appointment, but at the end shall speak, not lie. So he says that vision will not lie. Why? Because God is not a liar. If God spoke it, Whatever he spoke, that thing might take his time, like he said, let there be light. There could have been millions and millions or trillions of years before light was reflected. But my brother, the God who spoke it by vision, knew at some point, at his own appointed time, regardless of how many millions of years, when he spoke, he says, it's finished. It's done. He never went back to say, when is it coming? As far as he was concerned, it was as good as done. If God spoke it about you in the scripture, in the message of the hour, that you will be in the rapture, it's as good as done. Regardless of your feelings, regardless of your beliefs, that God is more than able. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh my, oh my, oh my. So then why are you crying? Why are you whimpering? God is not as cheap as you think. But today he sets up his sights. And tomorrow he says, I cannot see clearly. Once it's done, it's done. No matter how long it's going to take. But let me assure you, my brother, at an appointed time, the vision is going to speak. He says the bride is going to be without spot or wrinkle. It doesn't matter how many spots you see on yourself, how many wrinkles you see on yourself, but at an appointed time, the vision is going to speak. You see that, my brother? So what do we see here? But the end it shall speak and not lie. Oh, it tarry. When God speaks, he speaks in the present tense. And when he is spoken, it's finished. It's already done. It's already done. And when it's done, you just hold on. For the speaking of the vision. That's the fulfillment of it. 
So though it tarry, wait for it. So between the speaking of a vision and the speaking of a vision, that's where so much confusion comes. That's where so many get disturbed. But remember, God is just speaking of what he's seen. Yet he knows between here and getting to Mutare, where he says you reach, there is Rusape River to cross. There is Mutare River to cross. There is Christmas Pass to climb. He doesn't give you those details. But he's so sure that regardless of Mutare River, regardless of Christmas Pass, I saw him in Mutare. And he shall be in Mutare. Are we clear, my brother, my sister? That's what God does. That's what God does. He doesn't describe all the nitty gritties. What happened when they testify to you? But when you become a believer, you know, all things will begin to move. God will fight for you. Oh, if God can heal you, it's true, it's okay, it's there. But it's a vision. You're still struggling. You're still fighting. Yes, because between now and the speaking of the vision, there are so many rivers to cross. There are so many mountains to, 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 to climb. Like he says, now uh, what will happen about the rapture? He says there's going to be a rapture in Thessalonians. He says Paul preached it like it was coming in his day. And that's what happens with the promises. Those who come away with it like it's going to happen in their day. That's the way they have to say it. So that when they die, they die with that hope in them. And that's the hope that will resurrect them when the time comes. Are we together? So you see, they died with the hope. And here we are also. Some might go before the rapture. But should you go, you are going with the hope that will resurrect you. So between the speaking, uh, between the showing the vision and the speaking of a vision, there are so many things that will happen. Too many rivers to cross. Too many mountains. Oh, brother, you have a promise. You have a promise that you are holding on. But from the time of promise to the fulfillment of the promise, many things are there. That's where now he says, the vision is yet for an appointed time. And in the end it shall speak. For it tarry. In other words, God is acknowledging that it will delay. Wait for it. Don't run away. Don't be discouraged. Don't say there is no God. He says wait for it. That's where the problem is. People are not able to wait. But as a result, too many things begin to happen. Entangling on yourself. Yourself. Yes, finally you come back. And the vision will speak. Uh, but with shatter. many wounds, with many wounds to ness and to nature. Are we together? So, t wait for it. Mirira. Because it will surely come. You see, he confirms it there. Though it tarry, wait for it. Mirira. Because it will surely come. When God has given a promise in his word. No matter how long it takes for it to happen with you, my brother, wait for it because it will surely come. Hold on to that promise. He promised you the rapture. Don't give up. Hold on to the rapture. Promise. He gave a promise about the millennium. Hold on to the millennium promise. Oh, brother, we are told that Enoch was the seventh 
And he walked with God. And he was not. And that was a type of the Old Testament rapture. He went into the rapture. Right? And we count now also. We have come now in the seventh stage. Seven church ages. And in the last church age, there is the people who are walking with God. And they are not going to be not. In other words, like Enoch of old, we are just going to walk up. So the types and shadows show us what day we are living under. Enoch was the seventh. And in the church age, it was the seventh church age. We are the last bride to be called before the bride has to go in the rapture. And now this is what we'll call all the bride from all these ages. That's why they will rise up first. But we who are alive in the twinkling of an eye shall be changed. And we shall meet with them and go to meet the Lord. So if Enoch was the seventh, and he walked with God, he was not. And we are that 11th hour bride, the last time. After seven church ages, it means we will walk with God one of these days. You just have the last yard. You are God. Do you see that, my brother? So right there, he says, wait for it. Because it will surely come. You see the emphasis, it will surely come. So the time factor has nothing to do with the fulfillment of the vision. Whether it comes first, whether it delays, whether it comes when you are still young, whether it comes when you are old, but the fact is it shall come. But the time factor rests with God. That's why we don't wave these promises and all these events to threaten you so that you are afraid. Oh, oh the rapture is coming. No, we are simply laying down those things because they are promises. And by the Holy Spirit, it will encourage you and show you what day we are living under. And you say, Lord, help me. Lord, I want to be ready. Lord, I want to be ready. You see that there now. So he says, it will surely come to pass. It will not tarry. Beginning he says, it will tarry. So in the end he says, it will not tarry. You see what he's showing there? When you talk of an appointed time, it will happen at a time which is set. But why he says tarrying is the man who is moving in the unfolding of the vision. Is the one because he doesn't know the appointed time. Is the one who thinks ah it has taken time. Maybe it's no longer there. But in the eyes of God, it will not tarry at the appointed time that God knows is going to happen. It will not tarry. It will tarry. But it will not tarry. What? It's an appointed time. In your eyes, it's a delay. But in the eyes of God, it's in time. It's just that you didn't know the appointed time. Now, Proverbs 29, 18 says, Proverbs 29, 18, where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, Happy is he. We should be men and women of vision. And men and women of vision are men of purpose. In other words, when you have a vision, you purpose with your life to want, want to see the vision speak. But when there is no vision, you have nothing to purpose for. That's why as a believer, you set goals for yourself. Maybe by the end of this year, by the end of this week, by the end of this month, I want to have achieved this. By the end of tomorrow, 
I want to have done this and that and that and that. You should have a vision. And when you have a vision, then you can live a life that is purpose. And purpose will drive you to the fulfillment of your vision. Purpose will carry you on its wings to the appointed time. I want to be in the rapture. I want to be in the rapture. I will live to be in the rapture. It carries you on its wings to the fulfillment of the appointed vision. So when there is no vision, the people perish. It's not proper just to live a directional, a directional, uh, a life without direction. Where if the wind blows this way, you are there. If the wind blows this way, you are there. You should set goals and targets for yourself. This year, I have these things to achieve. One, two, three. Then you begin to live life with purpose. Not just wake up in the morning, what, what am I doing today? Where do I go today? What will happen today? Then you find you become an old man, gray-haired, with no direction, not having achieved anything in your life. You should be able to sit down and say, Lord, I have a vision. I want to achieve this. I want to achieve this. By three months this. By four months this. And then you purpose in your heart to work towards your vision. Though it will tarry, but it will surely come to pass. One time I was speaking to Brother Simbarashim when I was still by my place there. Just working in the garden before he was there. He says, Pastor, I, I, I have a vision. I want to, 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 to build a house. I have purpose that I would want to build a house. I stand in town. And maybe also have a plot. And maybe have a, have a wife. And have children. And there is another thing he said that I want this plot. When I look at almost that, it's already done. Your house is on which, which level now? It's completing brickwork in Sanzaguru. But he was saying that maybe he was not even earning $50. And this guy is working there. He doesn't get much money. Most people get, get the money much more than he does. But he purposed. He had a vision. So now with a vision and purpose, it means now whatever money's come, he is able to allocate this for marrying my wife, this for building my house. But if you have no vision, then you have no purpose, whatever money comes, it will just go wherever it goes. And at the end of 60 years, you sit down, you can't walk, you can't talk, you say, what have I done? What have I been doing? Was I not going to work? I was. Was I not receiving money? I did. So what happened? Then you commit suicide. Friends, we should purpose. We should have a vision. We should sit down and ponder and talk about what you would want to do. I remember one time I was speaking to brother, our head deacon here, brother success. I said, brother, when it comes a time, you can have a stand, brother. All you do is you can uh, 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 Maybe sell your kind and, 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 and you can. then finally he did, but then it was little money. He says, So you, know, you can put it on another car, use it while you build up. Then finally sell it and do. While he was doing that, by God's provision, 
The brother introduced somebody with a car for exchange with a stand in Sanzaguru. I think it was on Slab And they exchanged. I think there was some balance here to pay little by little. And now he finished. He changed his name. When we were going to uh, uh, Sanzaguru for the meeting, he says, Pastor, please, can we just pass through and then you say, he offer a word of prayer. And and we we got the, the house, the brickwork is finished. Uh, I think it's waka. now supposed to put his ring beam on ring beam level. Ring beam. In other words, now you are working with goals and purpose. That's what God does in his vision. You saw at this point I'll be doing this. At this point I'm preparing a bride for the rapture. I'm calling out a church in the seven church ages. At this point, I take my bride. At this time, there is three and a half years of tribulation. And the foolish virgins go through that. At this point, then, there is a bed of Aramagedon. And uh, the bodies of the kings will be eaten by the birds of the air. And at this point, there will be Gog and Magog. Now, Gog and Magog, they won't be birds of the air to eat. Because they will destroy by fire. So there won't be anything there too. So God sees whatever he thought, whatever he desired to see, he waits patiently and he sees each one of those things being fulfilled. Be patient with the scriptures. But ride on the wings of purpose to carry you to the fulfillment of the vision. Don't be discouraged by every little thing, every little disturbance that comes into your life, but you just stand your ground and say, Lord, you saw me there and I will be there. Purpose. Vision. Though it will tarry. But it will surely come to pass. Now, so, in an appointed time is by the author of life. That, that is in his timepiece. Yake. It's a time that he has set out himself. For you or for me. Appoint a time. And when that time comes, no matter the situation, nothing can hold back the speaking of that vision. So what should be your prayer? Lord, whatever vision you have about me, <laughs> I want to see it happen. I don't even have a cent in my pocket. But something tells me that the vision shall speak. It shall come to pass. I don't know how. I don't know when. I don't know where. But something tells me I have purpose in my life. Though it tarries, it shall speak. You're getting tired for your husband to be for your wife to be though the vision tarry it shall surely come to pass though the vision tarry hold on wait a little longer are you getting tired waiting for your child though the vision tarries it shall surely come to pass. So the appointed time is that. Oh, is, okay. So the appointed time is that time when, which is set out for you by God. Not when, not when things are good. Or not when, when things, things are bad. The goodness and badness of situations and things don't determine the appointed time. The appointed time can, can be in good times. Good times. The appointed times can be in bad times, but still the appointed time of God remains his appointed time. So don't determine the fulfillment of vision by the circumstances that are surrounding you. No, 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 no. no. That does not determine the appointed time. Are we together? 
Amen. I will pick up one example there to show. So God's time overrides all other situations and circumstances. When the vision begins to speak, it overrides. It conquers every other impediment, every other force that might want to stand against the fulfillment of the vision in the appointed time that has just come. You get my brother. In other words, the appointed time has a force that goes with it. It has an anointing that makes the promise come to pass. Which no other thing has. The appointed time is the opportune time. The appointed time is the anointed time for it to happen. Every situation at that time is working towards that thing being fulfilled. Now there it doesn't take your belief or your unbelief. Right there we can safely say your unbelief will not hinder God. The force of the anointing yeah, of the appointed time is so forceful that nothing can ever stand. Look Look at the Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. When he was in the grave, he prophesied while he was still alive. Destroy this temple. And in three days, I will bring it up. He spoke it. That was a vision. He saw himself coming up. And brother, before three days, there was a big stone, hallelujah, that was upon him, closing off that grave. But when the time came, brother, the stone was rolled away. Because the opportune time, the appointed time had come Nothing could ever stand before the opportune time. So what am I telling you, brother? Don't fear. Hold on. The day and the time is coming. You will be surprised how it will happen. God will do it. He has enough power. So when the appointed time comes, it comes with an anointing. That makes it possible. It comes with a force that drives the vision to happen. All this time, what you call tarring or delay, there had to be things that had to happen to shape you and mold you into a status where you are humble enough to be able to receive the blessing of the fulfillment of the vision. Are we together? God does not spoil his children. But God shapes and molds his children for the blessing that he has for them. And sometimes it looks like he's rough with them.
you don't have. Look, Jesus. Is the, then the angel rolled the stone away. There was Lazarus, a friend of Jesus, dead, buried, called for a friend to come. The friend Jesus could not come. But when Jesus met Mary and Martha, he says, if you were here, your friend would have not died. He told you, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. Even now. Even, in other words, he saw him rise up. So Mary could have wondered how, 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 how. Says, Come show me where you laid him. And then when he got there, he just says, Lazarus, come forth. One would have thought, where do we have the, the, the caterpillar to push it back? Where do we have the man with enough energy to put out all the dust? The, 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 the earth. When the time comes for something to happen, God has got the means. Don't you worry, my brother. Keep steady on the promise of God. Keep your eye on that vision. Keep your eye on that promise. When that time comes, God has got the means. Just do what you're supposed to do. What you're not able to do, don't worry. When the time comes, God has got the means. Don't have a negative testimony about the speaking of your vision. Have a positive testimony about positive. the speaking of your vision. And the rest God will take care of. The problem is we feel we have strength. We feel we are able to do it. We don't have anything we can do. We don't have anything we can do. We just have to be we strong. We just have to be strong. God who works his way. When the time comes, he has got his ways. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Do you believe that? Where is, where is the husband coming? When time for you to to marry, God to arrange his way. And his way. You know, for the vision to speak. So, Gino. God's time overrides all other situations and circumstances. It prevails over the prevailing situations. The appointed time is the opportune time. It's the best time. It's fruition time. It's manifesting time. All other times don't produce the desired results. But the appointed time will produce the desired results. Don't fight anyone. Don't fight your sister. Don't fight your brother. Don't scorn your brother. Don't scorn your sister. When the time comes, God has got the means to do it. So you see, God promised, as an example, Abraham a child. When the vision appears as if it was starring, Haga provides an alternative. A vision will be as was shown and given. That's why he was told to write. So you won't mistake it. So bring in a hugger into a vision where God said you'll have a child. By Sarah, that's not the fulfillment of that vision. But uh, Sarah, uh, 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 I mean, the wife was missing, thought as long as it's a child, 
Then we can safely give a testimony. God said, no, that is not it. You have, uh, you have given birth to a wild child. Everything that is born, which is not God's word, it will give you trouble. It will torment you. Look here. She can say, no, that provider. And out of that marriage comes a wild man. From that, they came a wild child. Don't force the fulfillment of a vision. Don't have an alternative of the given vision. So what do we see there? So he gave Abraham Haga. But we see now, much later when the man given a promise around 75 years of age. When Abraham now was around 19, Abraham, with no child, now God appears to him and tells that Sarah will give you a child. And actually verse 2 says of uh, Genesis 17 says, and Sarah said unto Abraham, behold now the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. Uh, restraining Kumisa. In other words, there was all possibility she could have given children, but God restrained for a reason. Where would we be talking of this testimony if God had not restrained? Of an old woman giving birth to a child. Past menopause. Of an old man having a child. Where would it? We have it. And now it's around 100 years and 90 years. Respectively, they get a child. But I want to pick up something there. Genesis 17, uh, 17, 17 says, And then Abraham tell up, fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto me that is in a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? Ipapo Abraham wakavira pa sine chiso chake akaseka akati moyomake komunu unamakore anezana ungabere ungabere kero amana ere. God is assuring Abraham and Sarah. Marivaru simbisa. Yet at an age which looks impossible. Pa makore aja ashakwa nisiki that you will have a child. Ever since 25 years ago. Writing on a promise. But now he reassures them. Change your eye. Change your eye. You once told us. You are not telling us. You are not telling us. You are not telling us. You are How is she going to, uh, to be in labor? But a vision is for an appointed time. Uh, it's for a set time. And when it begins to be fulfilled, there is no situation, there is no circumstance, there is no condition that can stand in the way of the fulfillment of that vision. Because the appointed time has an anointing that goes with it to make it come to pass. That's why now in Genesis chapter 18, God appears in Abraham in the plains of Mamre. Born and stricken in age. In verse 14, what does it say? Is anything too hard for the Lord? That's when he spoke to the woman and was saying, I'm old. Is anything too hard for the Lord? You see that phrase again from Habakkuk. It says, at the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. So right there, what Habakkuk says at an appointed time, we see here Sarah being assured that at an appointed time, Sarah is going to have a child. 
God had withheld it, waiting for the appointed time. Certain things, at, some, at a certain point, God might choose to withdraw. Or but yet, you will catch up with it somewhere along the way. It will be for a reason. Something he wants to shape. Something he wants to mold you. Mold your character. Mold your being for that which he has for you. But sometimes it comes in a way that's so rough. A way that you can never imagine or ever think of. Does God still ever love me? Why would he ever let, let this and let that? Brother, at an appointed time. Why, why do you allow me to continue to be in sickness? Why should I be sick? What have I done wrong? Sometimes God just withholds. Shaping and molding. But when the season comes, it is an anointing that nothing will ever stand in the way. So, with Abraham, there were circumstances surrounding the, that vision. Sarah was barren. Sarah was old. But yet God said, unto you, Abraham, and thy seed, I have given this land. And that promise was given long back. He says, your, 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 your sons, your children shall be like the stars in the sky. Yet the wife was barren. God already seen them having children. Oh, tonight if God can show us what he has already seen us, being or attaining my brother, then you can smile from your stupid face and say, thank you, Lord. If God could just open up to show you just what is a little ahead of you, what he has prepared for you, what he is shaping you for, brother, you could smile. You could say, oh, devil, get thee behind me. I don't care what you do. I don't care what you say, Satan. For that which is said before me, I will press on. Because at the appointed time, the vision will speak. So finally, we see the vision being fulfilled when Abraham was 100 years, Sarah about 90 years. And Sarah gives birth to a child at an appointed time, a certain time. God never allowed her. She at 15, 20, 30, 45. And God waited until Sarah was 90. We have very few people here who could be 90. Oh, no, oh, no. Imagine. Imagine. Sarah is just still young as compared to Sarah's age. But Sarah is still waiting for the, for the ah, child. Ah, she she was was she 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 was she was she she was she was she was she was she she was she she was 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 she Wait for it to speak. So always there is circumstances that build up to the fulfillment of a vision. For example, to get Israel into the promised land, God had promised after 400 years, I will take you out with a strong hand. God seen himself taking them out. But he says after 400 years, one would have thought they were just there, life was normal. They would just be there after 400 years, okay guys, you've experienced some nice life, let's go on. But brother, it was after 400 years of suffering, molding bricks, mixed with the mortar, thorns and grass, shamboks on their backsides. Yet God promised he's seen them going out. But between the speak, between uh, the, 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 the writing of the vision and the actual fulfillment of the vision, Brother, for those 400 years, those guys were in trouble. 
they were in trouble. But yet he says, after 400 years, I will. And for sure, when after 400 years, then God come down. By his strong and mighty hand, he took them out. As if to say, maybe it was just going to be three days' journey. But it took them 40 days very go around in the wilderness because of their doubts and their behaviors. Don't delay yourself in the wilderness by your behavior and conduct. Amen. Amen. So right there, what do we see? We see God coming to take them out. But for sure, it took a long time. 400 years. Even when he sent Moses, Pharaoh became even harder. God knew it was part of the conditions to condition Israel to be ready to receive the fulfillment of the vision. So they would have an appreciative eye of the scriptures that God gave them. And I will take you out with a mighty hand. I will take you to that promised land. There is many things that happen in our lives that we cannot explain. But brother, God is conditioning you for the fulfillment of the vision. Okay, let me skip the other thing so I can close. Joseph. Josepha. God did show him a vision. Becoming king. It was like a chisote chake, chiri pakati, chemazukoma wake, nababa wake, namai wake. He was on the sender and then his brothers and mother were bowing to him. Father and mother said, are you, are you, you tell us you will be king. The vision seen him king. Way out there in Egypt. But for the circumstances they were seeing here, he said, no, there is nothing like that. There's nothing like that. Up until they saw When they were doing that, they were fixing him. They were fixing him. They thought they were killing the vision. They didn't know that they were They were, were, were part of the mechanics. Zamari. They were part of the to push Joseph uh, to the throne. Let me tell the you, throne. friends, there is many things sometimes we do. We think we are just being rough on somebody. You think you are fixing somebody. Yeah, yeah. You think you are fixing, but God may be as a fixer. You are just pushing him towards the fulfillment of his vision. Do you know some of the things we face? They cause us to go down on our knees and pray. If those things were not there, we would kneel down to pray. Do you know some of the things we face will force us to go and listen to the tape? If those comes to them, no, we would not do it. But it looks, it's a, it's a rough situation. It's a rough condition, but it's part of God's mechanics and tools to shape you and to mold you towards the fulfillment of a vision. Imagine, Baba na mai wa shiramba shiratizo, mazikoma otenge samana wa Baba na mai. We refusing the vision. Wono mukanda, wono mukanda mukomba. They threw him into the pit. It was dead. They put blood on his clothes. Little did they know that they were pushing him towards the fulfillment of a vision. Don't go to Satan. Satan is in Jesse Jesse. Sometimes it is God's artillery which he uses. Kopaid destroyed this temple. 
and in three days name Musa. They are pirate as now judge against him. Kodai my Roman soldier as now Muraya, Barry rise at Swasi. God has a purpose. So what we see Donachi. from that tension picked up, sold to the Midianites. Kubaba, Mugomba, he goes into that house of uh, 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 is is it Potiphar? Yeah, Potiphar. He works there. Oshanda, he excels there. Obudirira. And right in there, the wife Ipapa. of Potiphar tried to go on a smear campaign. Smear campaign, Usachka. Don't fear. 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 So, so that that Maybe that is what is going to bring mess. People will start to scold at you towards the fulfillment of a vision. How oh, then she goes on a smear campaign. Jesus says, I don't know nothing about that. Do you see now the means that God uses towards the fulfillment of a vision? as my events and circumstances are, they are building you towards the fulfillment of the vision that God has for you. We need to be mature. We need to be mature. And can I just keep on God satisfying? God, Mire, let's stand our ground. Let's allow God to deal with us full course. Imagine, Bufu. getting into the jail. Rekunzu waka repamkazu attends. Iyasina. Being framed that you raped uh, your boss wife. But God was in it. Do you know many times in your situations, God is in your circumstances and situations. He's trying to drive you towards God the vision machinery. Uko hope zanga zaga du shawa mambo baba na mai na matukoma wacha kuna mata. The dream had told him that uh, his mother. But when you say that, you know, do wash and nama tajuri. You know, and tenge saka. You know, and tenge zinga. How is it going to happen? You know, in the summer, now it's why Egypt. It has no. She has had swatch ruzi. How is it going to be fulfilled? God in Egypt was already shaping and molding and driving him towards the fulfillment of the vision. Oh, that, uh, so that is what is going to happen. So that is what is going to happen. God is shaping you uh, for the fulfillment of the vision. Uh, people uprise against you. Yeah, he did this yeah. and that. Sometimes he gets suspended. But God, uh, he will be shaping you. Uh, he will be shaping you. Uh, the, uh, I want to tell you, brother, you will never be what you used to be. You will handle that with humility and respect to what God's word says. And you will know how to run those blessings. Finally, when he's in jail, by the gift which was rejected by the father and the mother and the brothers, he gave interpretation to that dream. And by the interpretation and the usage of that gift that God gave him, scripture says your gift will make you stand before the kings. King said, bring him before me to interpret my dream. And Joseph interpreted the dream. Says from now onwards, you'll be my right hand man. 
Joseph became king. Wherever you went, Mapo, people are irida. Ichiwa na wanam koma. You only go for the wanam koma. Watch us. We want to know what you know. Should we vision in Yamba? Just imagine how. Mariwaro wani kane jar. Yeah, there was anger. Chipo chava katzinga chia chia inda preta jar. The gift that they chased away. Ingo go go go. Kwa ita jar. Kwa yoni kwa chikaf chete ndiko go. Uno zano zini tamari zimengo. Sometimes you look down upon one another. Sometimes you look down upon one another. God will remove everybody. God is not just doing that for nothing. He is but trying to teach you. Don't do that. He's trying to teach you you need your brother. So those brothers needed their brother Joseph. Those parents needed their son Joseph. There was anger and they were forced to go to Egypt. It also forced the father and the mother to go to Egypt. And go and tell the one to a man, but the one was a man. 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 When they followed him, they were a king. When God gave him the wish, he, they bought before him. He gave them They were afraid. Though the vision tarried, yet will it come to pass. There are many things that God has promised for you. Don't let situation circumstances. Don't let the economy. Don't let your normal life. Uh, don't let what people say don't let the circumstances surrounding you ever dim the vision that God has for you though the vision may tarry yet at an appointed time it shall come to pass are we together my brother are we together my sister and did Jemima uh, and Jemima. Yes, was fulfilled so soon. Uh, Praying always, my brother. But the previous night she had prayed so much. Until late at night, she saw a vision of Elijah, a pastor coming to her with a big head and whatever, whatever. He says, He will come there. And she woke up. She stood by the gate. I, I like such faith. Standing to see Elijah come. It doesn't matter how many minutes it took. It doesn't matter how many hours it took. Maybe she stood there even before, before he started coming. But watch the circumstances that God used. The plane had to have an emergency landing. Uh, the plane which was carrying that person, that Elijah, uh, had an emergency landing. In other words, it was not supposed to land in Memphis. But because of that vision, God purposed by whatever technical faults and whatever. For all things work together for good. And then he tells him, walk down, walk down, walk down, walk down. Walk down. Maybe after three or four hours or five hours standing there, maybe it was hot or it was cold, but she just remained there. Watching the way. Remain there, my brother. Watching the scripture. Watching the promise. It will surely come to pass. Yeah, yeah, now, you know, it is going to be fulfilled. It's going to be done. 
Why was it said? You are going to receive the Holy Ghost. What do you see? And Jemima finally sees something, something coming. Good morning, person. He says, How did you know? As I say, I was a person. In other words, vision, in the vision, she saw what uh, the the person was in the stature. In other words, Maria, Anna, Kumuratiza, Brother Branham, don't go to where Joan is. No, no, no. Uh, uh, the person who came was the exact person. The person uh, there were church. many ministers in that Memphis, or many preachers. But because he shown this woman As Malachi four, and that Malachi four, that person was only one. That's why at that time he happens to be traveling somewhere. And he was in an aeroplane, which was not supposed to land even in that city. But God allowed something to happen. There was an emergency landing. Because God the visionary. Yet will it come to pass. It pays to wait upon God's promise. With with all these years, I will not be in the house. 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 I will not be Ramba uchi taura ni uchira tizo. Pango amakato ya kuna kuna andi jemaima. Koinda kumuka mangwana ni kuna tono. Somebody might have said, why why did you wake up? Koinda, koinda. Why why? Koinda kuchema tongo zamu chingo chema mbwa muchingo na malako. Koinda. Why are you crying when you are praying? People will do whatever they do. But let me tell you, brother, you are not answerable. You are open to reasons. You are answerable to the promise. And, and the vision that God has given Nature about you. More and more where we are going now, the rapture about hitting, uh, we have to be solid Christians. That's why you don't have to say that you 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 have to say
My brother, my sister, tonight, you believe that you are in a vision. Do you believe there is a vision about you that God sees? Would you want to see yourself in the speaking of the vision? May God help you. Don't be discouraged. Don't be disheartened. God will fulfill it. It does not take the work of a man. It takes the work of Jehovah God. At the appointed time, it shall be. It shall be. God sees those hands. As I invite, uh, as I ask Pastor Solomon Correra to commit those hands to the Lord. Oh, that the Lord can bring about to pass the fulfillment of the vision that he's seen about these children that are here, that they don't get discouraged by the circumstances that are trying to shape and mold them towards the speaking of a vision. Amen, 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 amen. Do you believe tonight that God will help you and that you will stand your ground? I'll give over to Pastor Correa to pray. Baba wedu wa rikuwa kumusoro kudenga. Tino kutenda ima niruanu. Tino kutenda ine shoko renyu. Marima kanaka. Ramati pama niruanu. Chikafu chakafu panira muya yedu. Tawiatine nzara panu. Asimu ya yedu ya kutsukwa. Marima kanaka takutsikana. Murimariwano Simbis Ashokorao. Yes, Lord. Sakaman Iruano Baba, Chitbatira is seven avenue to Sim Zamaoko. Yes, Lord. Marima Kanaka, Tinoda Kuziva. Marima Kanaka, Kanaku, and Ashwarin Zino Bokamuri. Yes, Kutibaba Mutibat Siri Mutipenasha, the extended Sikana. Yes, Panama events and Otoran Zimbo Pagatipech, Kutaro, Kuchira Tizonokusakis Kakuacho. Yes, Lord. Tibatira woman Iruano Tendum Senesamasi Bosi. Tinoziwa Jinji Waka Viringi Kanes Ripakati. Asewa na we nyu tasim zama hoko yelu baba. Kuswa karubati roku bakwa muri Jehovah. Yes, Lord. Tino ziwaka na imi maka pachira tizo. Hakuna chika chipikisa. Yes, Lord. Hakuna ma circumstances anga unga na kana kubatana. Yes, Lord. Marima kanaka anga shaye samukana uku zazikis kwa kwechira tizo. Yes, Lord. Baba, hakuna ma dimoni. Hakuna kunyango enshemwe ya ya kaipa. Yes, Lord. Inga shungana marima kanaka kuruisa chira tizo. Yes, Lord. Baba, izi, ishe tino ziwona kupvira. Marima Kanaka, Mchishanda, and open you one who attend. Yes, Baba Makataka Kushanda now. Yes, Lord. It is this, Makava Mimbisa, Akuna Chime, Chavaka, Papanika Panach, Nakuitika. Yes, Lord. 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 Yes, Baba Makanaka, Tuna Sama Simbat, Apotaka Mirira Kuyakwenu. Yes, Lord. Baba Ropa Fazai, Kunango no Kombore and Fundis. Mari Makanaka, Mashant Sama Niruanu. Yes, Lord. Ropa Fazai, Kunango, Navenu, Mutiti, Rakanaka, Patnoska Kupera, Quesavis Ino, Tino Kupera, Tum Fabine, Sumia Shazenu, Takumira Zese, Muzita, Ramambo, and Firo, the Jess of Christ and Oxinga Peri. Amen. Amen. Song leader, don't lose your vision. Mimi says,